to all of you and good morning to all those who joined through online. Right, friends, first of all, I welcome I welcome all of you to this introductory session on anthropology optional, right. So, in this class, let us try to decode anthropology as an optional subject for UPSC, right. So, first, like before we go on with our classes, let us try to understand what is basically anthropology and how anthropology plays a vital role in your UPSC civil services mains, okay. So, this should be our focus in today's class. So, that like uh, you will get to clear everything about uh, what is the syllabus and how uh, it will fetch you or how it will help you in mains. So, all those things let us try to understand, okay. First, I will explain everything about anthropology optional. Then, like I will open the floor for doubts. So, whenever, uh, wherever you have the questions, there you can just pick the questions and you can just ask the questions and I will answer for those questions, right. And meanwhile, in the class, if you have any doubts, you can just raise the hand so that I will just take the, take the doubt and then we can proceed. So, like that, let us proceed. First of all, like let us begin with a fair quote. Like if we want to be successful in life, like we need to have some mantra, success mantra. So, for today, like in this fine morning, let us have a fine mantra for this successful life. So, one of the way to become successful in life is taking a right decision at the right time. When we take a right decision at the right time, definitely it will drive us in a right direction, right. So, this is very, very important if we want to become successful. That means decisions uh, should be fair and it should be right, okay. So, keeping and driven by the inspiration of this thought or this quote, let us try to see how we can become successful in UPSC mains, okay. That means if we want to become successful in UPSC, what we have to do? What we have to do means like we have to select a right optional at the right time with the right strategy and at the right place under a right mentor, okay. So, I am making this statement that you have to select the right optional at the right time with the right strategy, right. And that too like under uh, at a right place under a right mentor. See, why am I bringing optional as a success mantra for UPSC is that like optional plays a greater and vital role in mains in the sense if you see like we have seven papers where we have essay paper and four GS papers and apart from that we will have optional paper also. So, if you look amongst all those like generally those five papers like one essay and uh, four optionals, four, uh, uh, four GS papers, all of them will be common to all. That means everyone will have those papers similar to that, similar to uh, everyone. In the sense there is no special choice of selection of their own interest. But optional subject is the subject where we can have a separate, uh, some, some kind of separate privileges from that side. So, if you want to say like uh, some of the, some of the important aspects of optional subject, it actually optional subject, it gives a right to choice of selection to aspirants. That means like based on your own field of interest, based on your own choice, obviously you can select an optional, okay. And before selecting an optional, like we shall have to check about we shall have to check about some criteria how to select and how to choose an optional, okay. So, as it gives an, uh, as it gives a right to choice, so from that point of view, it is one of the best because you can choose the subject of your own choice, right. And second thing is that like optional subject generally, it acts as a catalyst to boost your score, catalyst to boost your score in the sense, let us see how this will happen. So, generally like catalyst to boost your score. So, generally what happens means all those aspirants who give the exam and if you look at, if you analyze the scores of toppers, mostly out of all the five papers, they will get around 500 to 600. This would be the maximum bridge. That means out of, out of 1250, out of 1250, they will get that most, okay. And if you see in optional subjects, 
in two papers of optional subject, there is every possibility to score in between 300 to 350. Okay. See, out of 1250 you are scoring, maximum would be 600. But out of 500, you are scoring this much. So this is one thing which is astonishing from optional paper point of view. So here, what I am trying to say you is that, so from that point of view, as we can score, at least in the sense half of the score that we are getting from GS papers, it can be from optional paper. That is one of the beauty of optional. So from that point of view, it can boost your preparation. It can boost your uh, score likewise. And apart from that, like optional subject also, it provides uh, an extra advantage uh, over other aspirants if you happen to choose a subject which has better overlapping with GS portions. Okay, there are so many optionals, but your choice should be in such a way that the syllabus of that optional should overlap with majority of the portions of GS sections. Okay, so that you can get an extra advantage over other aspirants. So, these things you will be getting from optional subject. Okay, so if we try, if we analyze the past trends of optional subjects, like uh, there are so many popular optional subjects, like it can be uh, political science, international relations, it can be sociology, it can be like uh, public administration or like geography. So there are so many popular optionals, but out of all the available optionals, one of the most popular and hot favorite and most successful optional is anthropology, okay? So let us try to understand more and uh, let us try to see uh, how anthropology is the right optional and the best optional and how it is the, uh, how it is the hot favorite optional for most successful students, okay? So that's, we are going to decode now. So if you see, like, uh, if we learn about anthropology, before we see why it is a best optional for anthropology, first of all, we have to understand, some of you might be very new to uh, the UPSC, so that you might not be aware of what is anthropology first. So first, let's try to understand basically what is anthropology, then let us try to understand why op anthropology is the best option, okay? So if we want to answer the question for this, that is what is anthropology? Anthropology is in simple manner, it is nothing but, it is a systematic study of man and his activities. Systematic study of man, in the sense like we will try to study everything about humans, that means from beginning from the origin of human being as a species to present situation and what is all happening in the society also we will be reading in anthropology okay that is one thing so in very simple manner to say anthropology refers to simply the study of man study of man is whatever man will do whatever man will do that means as a member of society man performs certain functions like every person like he will undergo for uh, some of the activities like uh, for every person there would be a group of members called family okay so we will study about the issues things like family and every person in his life he go through uh, the process of marriage so we will study about marriage as a social institution and then we will study how other aspects like uh, uh, every person will have relationship with his family members and relatives so that is kinship. So we will study how this kinship has started. So relations and how we call and all those things. So then like man has created some of the organizations like political organization, economic organization, all of those for his survival, right? So we will try to study about those organizations. So apart from that, like uh, there are certain biological aspects. Biological aspects means like uh, how the life has originated evolution of human being and after evolution like uh, how life is sustaining and various biological aspects so which you have studied in your basic science so that thing let's try to uh, we will be studying and in the similar fashion like uh, we will 
have we have a peculiar thing called language so we will try to study uh, how language has originated and uh, what are the various theories of language and uh, all such kind of things so whatever man will do so we will try to study among about that so that would be our subject matter in anthropology okay and if we happen to see uh, the syllabus generally like mostly syllabus would be divided under six topics we can divide the syllabus into six topics and this is how only we are going to study in the sense like as i have told you generally to say like we will have basically anthropology can be divided into four branches one would be socio cultural anthropology which covers various social aspects of human being like as we have discussed family marriage kinship all such things then there would be some uh, uh, something like uh, biological aspects like what is genetics or like uh, uh, what is growth and development all such things okay applied anthropology everything would be covered under the physical physiological anthropology then linguistic anthropology is one another branch where we will study about the languages all those things like various languages available across the world and india all such things so then archaeological anthropology that means with the available uh, remains of the past we will try to study how uh, and uh, how we can study the past history of man so likewise so apart from that like we will have tribal anthropology and indian anthropology like various aspects of indian anthropology and various aspects of tribals because tribals are the primitive uh, primitive or predecessors of modern man so we have to study that one also so this would be the major uh, major thing which we are going to understand in anthropology okay so by this time like do you have idea like what is anthropology and what anthropology consists of so with this knowledge let us try to understand why anthropology is the best optional subject for upsc okay so why means there are certain factors and we will try to understand this syllabus uh, and uh, same thing i have explained also we will try to understand this one when we go to syllabus part okay so first if you see if you try to answer this question that is why anthropology is the best optional subject there are certain parameters on which we can uh, judge an optional so first parameter is that we have to look at the nature of the syllabus if we look at the very basic nature of the syllabus of uh, anthropology anthropology uh, the syllabus is very well defined in the notification itself and with well predictable nature of the questions that means syllabus is very well defined it has been clearly mentioned in the notification itself that these uh, portions would be covered under uh, this thing and uh, simply to say some subjects will involve implicit topics but anthrop in anthropology like we can't have we won't have such kind of thing and things would be direct likewise and questions also if you happen to read or if you happen to go through the syllabus properly most of the questions would be in a direct format it would be given in a direct format and from the syllabus itself they'll be picked likewise and uh, we will see some of the past questions also so that you will get an idea how the questions would be asked okay so one thing is that syllabus is very well defined okay we will see the syllabus also that is one thing so next thing is that the nature of the subject if you look at the nature of the subject like anthropology is more of static subject than dynamic subject more of static so i am making a statement that it is more of a static because if you look at some other subjects it may be like political science and international relations where international relations would be mostly dynamic it would be dominated by current oriented things and current topics okay and other topics also like uh, there uh, we can have we have to update thoroughly with the current updates likewise right so but if you look in anthropology there is no such kind of thing in the sense like slight portion like for example wherever there are things related to tribals so there we have to un update about some schemes likewise rest all would be normal and for some basic uh, basic case studies or basic examples we, we have to update okay from that point of view it would be more more of static 
So, what is the advantage if the subject is static means once you read it is done and dusted ok. Like slight updation would be enough. If you have a fair notes, if you prepare a fair notes once obviously you do not need to just work on that notes again and again. Simply you can just keep updating the examples, you can keep updating the case studies that is it ok. So, that makes your job easy because in UPSC we cannot say when the selection will happen. It may take one year, in within one year also it may happen or it may take 3, 4, 5 years also ok. So, from that point of view like this subject will fetches, fetches you that advantage that is one thing. So, then third advantage or third factor is that the scoring prospects, scoring prospects. Anthropology is one of the optional subject with highest scoring prospects. Let us have some of the examples, let us see some of the toppers score also. So, it is one of the uh, optional with highest scoring prospects and most success rate ok. Let us see how that is also in the sense like uh, roughly to say uh, for example, out of all the people like the success rate of anthropology optional is 10 percent, 10 percent success rate in the sense roughly if 800 people will write the mains with anthropology optional out of that uh, roughly 80 people will select. So, it is not a simple, simple thing ok. One of the biggest competitor for anthropology is like sociology. So, rest optionals like there is little less success rate in the sense like uh, other optionals will uh, hold like 5 to uh, 8 or 5 to 8 percent success rate ok. So, that is that is the success rate of anthropology uh, optional ok that is one thing. So, then apart from this what we have apart from this what we have means the availability of resources. If we talk about the advantage of availability of resources, we have a good chunk of availability of resources. It can be, it can be in the form of books or references or it can be in the form of availability of faculty right. So, we have that facility also, but for some optionals it is not the case. Some optionals lacks this resource availability. And finally, like a syllabus overlapping, syllabus overlapping. So, we have to select such an optional which has greater overlapping with the major portions of the UPSC syllabus. So, anthropology is one such optional like which covers almost all the papers of your GS. Let us see like uh, what portions would be covered uh, through optional likewise, through anthropology likewise ok. So, these are all inherent advantages that are there uh, with you if you take anthropology as an option right. So, let us see first let us try to see, uh, let us try to have a look at the uh, syllabus, how the syllabus would be there and uh, what we are going to do ok. So, as we were discussing we will have two papers for optional. So, in anthropology also we have two papers. So, first paper has been uh, generally divided into four sections ok. So, what that four sections will consist means, so as I was showing you here. So, we have two papers, paper 1 and paper 2. So, paper 1 consists of these portions. So, it consists of syllabus related to physical anthropology where we will study about the biological aspects of man and socio-cultural anthropology here we will study about various the social aspects of man like family, marriage, kinship likewise. So, then we will have a portion related to uh, linguistic anthropology and then we will have archaeological anthropology. So, these things we will be studying in paper 1 point of view. And apart from this like we will have some approaches to study the culture like anthropological theories and thoughts. So, we will also study that in detail in paper 1. In paper 2 we will have the major two sections. One would be Indian anthropology roughly half of the portion would be Indian anthropology and the next portion would be the tribal anthropology ok. We will study that one also. So, these are the major uh, six portions which we will be covering in anthropology right. So, syllabus is very well defined and uh, uh, this 
would be this syllabus okay just anyhow you will be getting it from online also you can just download or you can just collect from the management so syllabus would be there this one would be syllabus and uh, there are certain portions we will be beginning with the socio cultural anthropology part okay where we will study about the topics like nature of culture nature of society like marriage right then family likewise so we have some topics so just go through the syllabus so that you will get like we will have topic like kinship then economic organization okay then political organization religion and anthropological theories and thoughts like how the culture has evolved and various approaches to study the culture so these things would be there in here then culture language communication then so we will have some biological portions like human genetics then mendelian genetics chromosomes and chromosome elaborations likewise okay if you study these topics it will not only help from examination point of view but also from our personal point of view also it will help that means we can enrich ourselves for example like every one of you will go through the process of marriage so just we will know what are different uh, how marriage has evolved as an institution or like what are different marriage practices available likewise and family like we will try to learn how family has evolved and uh, uh, like various impacts of family family structure such kind of things and generally like uh, uh, at homes the elders will say to generally to girls that to get married earlier why means like when they get married at later ages after 30 35 years likewise then there would be some inherent issues for them so we will study about such kind of issues like chromosomal aberrations like what kind of issues it may lead when uh, when a girl goes for late marriages after 35 years likewise so there are certain scientific basis for everything so such kind of aspects also we will be studying okay so uh, like so all such concepts would be covered and uh, this would be the syllabus for paper 1 okay just go through so that once you if you go through you will get to understand what topics are there for us right and we are going to cover this particular portion in and around around 60 classes for paper 1 because uh, the syllabus would be predominantly more for paper 1 so where we are we will be, be we will be doing this into different modules like you might have got the class schedule so under that you can see the first uh, roughly the first 15 classes would be allocated to socio-cultural anthropology portion 15 classes would be allocated to socio-cultural anthropology up to fifth class 15 where you can see uh, the religion topic okay that's purely uh, purely socio-cultural part then from class 16 to 27 or class 16 to class 30 it would be related to anthropological theories and thoughts and that will also uh, related to uh, the social cultural part only but we will talk about theories portion more anthropological theories and thoughts so in every subject we will have some scholars and they will give their opinions and the theories so that portion would be studying in uh, the next 15 classes okay so then next 30 classes will be handling with the other portions like the physical anthropology portion and our biological anthropology that means still class number 50 or class number uh, 62 you can see class number 62 so class 62 there you can end the complete paper one portion paper one portion so pure physical anthropology would be till class 55 or 56 so next module would be physical anthropology so roughly they will go till up to class number 50 okay so class number 60 so then from roughly from 63rd class onwards we will be beginning our paper 2 okay so where uh, we will just 
complete all other rest portion which is available in paper 2 okay so here we are moving with a sequence we are uh, by the time we will complete the paper 1 it gives a connectivity to paper 2 also so we will have that one and we will just continue likewise so that is one thing and that's how we are going to we are going to flow and here we will have uh, two modules one would be like for indian anthropology and other would be for tribal anthropology so together we will have roughly 30 classes and it will extend till uh, other 5 to 10 classes so roughly we, we may have like around 30 to 40 classes we can cover the entire syllabus okay that's how uh, we will progress in the classes right so that is with respect to the syllabus and how we will proceed how we will proceed in the classes so then like uh, we were talking about something called uh, uh, the uh, success rate and marks okay like as i was saying you anthropology is one subject which gives you best marks right so can you guess what would be the top marks in any optional subject that anyone might have got hmm. uh, yes so in anthropology the top scorer has got 362 362 this was the top score ever in any anthropology has been written in any any optional and that is uh, with anthropology optional here you can see in the year 2018 there was a student and uh, her name was lakshmi nagappan so she got all india rank 45 in 2018 and she got 362 marks 362 marks and anthropology is one such subject which has continuously producing which is continuously producing results with more than 300 uh, marks each and every year okay that means that such consistent success rate and such consistent uh, results are there from this so you can see other other toppers with good marks if you see in the year 2022 there was a student and uh, uh, her name was Nidhi Pai she got all India rank 110 and she see uh, she got 325 marks and this was one of the top marks in this year in 2022 of all optionals this was the top score okay and like other student Puma Harati got secured all India rank 3 and she has secured uh, she has scored around 293 that means around 300 okay so in 2021 we had some students like Narayan Amit he has scored 306 and like uh, Shruti Rajalakshmi, she scored 288. So then in 2020, the topper of UPSC has anthropology as an optional, Shubham Kumar, and he secured uh, around, he has got around 320 marks. And then Lakshmi Nagapan, we have already discussed about her. And then we have like uh, others, uh, others like Akshat Jain, who got 335 marks in 2018. And then Ayush Shinha, who got 350 marks in 2017 and 2017 was the year year of boom for anthropology where so many of them has secured more than 300 likewise so you can see like 318 339 338 likewise so that's how uh, anthropology has consistently produced a uh, lot of uh, ranks and good marks okay so if you happen to follow the classes regularly and if you just do some basic research works which will be uh, said in the class then it is very much possible that you can also score more than 300 okay but i'm not saying that it's a cake walk for everyone but it can be possible okay impossible itself says i am possible so it is very much possible for you also right so we can have uh, that kind of advantage from anthropology right so that is one thing so then like we were talking about the overlapping of the syllabus how anthropology syllabus would be overlapped with the gs portion syllabus let's try to see uh, the overlapping portions okay so there are a lot of portions where we can see the overlapping uh, of overlapping portions of uh, anthropology syllabus with general studies 
if you see in gs paper 1 if you see in gs paper 1 we have indian society section and then in paper 1 we have indian heritage and culture like in main syllabus indian heritage art and culture that portion and apart from that like we have essay and ethics paper so if you look at the relevance of these papers the relevance of these papers can be seen in these topics we have nature of uh, culture nature of society marriage family kinship religion culture language communication and race and racism these topics would be repeated in indian society and indian culture and essay and ethics also if you have knowledge of this you can just write better in this perform better in these topics if you have knowledge of these topics you can perform better here right so things would be repeated one thing is that if you done once like hit one board at uh, hit uh, two boards with one shot likewise so this is one area where it gets overlaps so then if you see in paper two in paper two where we talk about indian anthropology same if we talk about indian society where we have some of the topics like demographic profile of india right so we have population and associated issues in gs section society and then indian population factors influencing its structure and growth this is one topic in anthropology same would be there in uh, gs gs society so demographic theories you'll be studying about the demographic theories in human geography also so here also you will get that theories malthusian theories like you will get the, those theories so that things then we will have structure and nature of traditional indian social system how indian social system has evolved like what is caste system what are the features of indian society all those things so that would be dealt here so caste system it's well very well known to us so that would be covered in paper two and likewise and then like next topic is like contributions of anthropology in understanding regionalism communalism and all ethnic other ethnic political movements so if you happen to recollect the society section you will have the topics like regionalism communalism and secularism likewise so that would be overlapping here <coughs> likewise so that is one thing then if you see in history portion history portion from gs section so we will study here about paleolithic mesolithic or neolithic or like chalcolithic copper age bronze age iron age all these things we will study there also then you will study about the buddhism jainism all of those things and uh, how islam has uh, uh, entered into india and about about christianity all those things and here we will systematically study about what's the impact of those religions okay on indian society likewise so then like we will also study some other aspects like the things which you study in the history like harappan culture indus valley civilization like all these things like paleolithic mesolithic chalcolithic ages so this you will study so at the very beginning then like uh, those are some portions okay then in modern history you will study about the socio religious reform movements where you will also study about the tribal uh, tribal uh, movements and all those things so in anthropology also we will have that portion unrest among tribal people and tribal movements so if you read there it will be helpful here also right likewise so in this similar fashion these are the overlapping portions with history section okay so you will read them okay so that's one thing then if you look at geography portion here like we have some topics like tribal situation in india where we will talk about different tribes and their geographical distribution and all those things so this topic would be relevant from that section okay and then problems of tribal communities what kind of problems they will face all those things and uh, we will have in society section we will have that uh, we will read about a topic called social empowerment where we will uh, we will read about issues faced by various groups like tribals scheduled caste scheduled tribes likewise so there that topic would be covered and apart from that like we will have uh, indian polity and constitution section so here also we have some things like uh, uh, linguistic and religious minorities and their socio political and economic status so we will study about some of the safeguards for linguistic and religious minorities 
article 29 and 30 right so that one we will cover and then there would be various problems faced by scheduled castes and tribes in society so we will study for them or study about them and there would be so many uh, constitutional safeguards for scheduled tribes and castes so we will try to study all of them like article 14 article 15 how they will safeguard the scheduled tribes and that means vulnerable sections so same thing we will study there and concepts would be relevant here also right so likewise so then if you look and look at the governance and social justice portion there are some topics like uh, social change and contemporary tribal societies where impact of modern democratic institutions and developmental programs welfare measures for tribals and weaker sections this is what you study in social justice welfare schemes and for various sections like for women for children for youth for uh, tribals for scheduled caste for scheduled tribes all of them so this would be covered here also okay social justice part also would be covered likewise then like history of administration of tribal areas tribal policies plans programs of tribal development this is pure though it is purely for tribals but this portion would already be covered in social justice portion are you getting that so that is one extra advantage so likewise uh, in governance portion you will get this topic rule of ngos in the governance here we will be talking this from the perspective of tribal development okay so in governance tribal development is one part so here we will study in depth about how ngos will help in the tribal development likewise so likewise so in polity like we will have uh, uh, we will study about how, what are states and stateless societies likewise here also we will study how the institution of governance has started starting from how people try to gather from there onwards we will study about that likewise so that is one portion then in paper three we have general science and science and technology portions where we will study about the human evolution and emergence of man and then we will study about biological basis of life like what is cell differences between cell cell division all such kind of basic things then like genetics and such kind of portions human diseases and medicine vaccines immunization all such concepts we will study in science so and concept of growth and development how human being has developed growth and development concept so these things would be relevant from paper 3 portion so likewise so these are some relevant portions then if you see environment ecology there is a topic called uh, concepts and uh, methods of ecological anthropology so that topic would be relevant like what are adaptations what are acclimatizations and how man can adapt to various environments for example man may be living in higher altitude man may be living at colder places man might be living in the hot places so how man adapts to these things that would be covered under the ecological anthropology that is one thing okay so that's how it would be related to paper three that portion even for economy also and agriculture portion also there is some overlapping if you see like a uh, economic organization nowadays we have advanced modes of economic organizations like we have market where we will go for even we are going for cashless transactions digital transactions but in this economic organization we will study how these economic organization has had a begin in the sense starting from barter system how barter system has began and what are the various primitive modes of distribution of uh, things resources likewise so that things would be studying there okay then apart from that there are different modes of subsistence like hunter gathering fishing pastoralism horticulture agriculture all those things so same things you will be studying in uh, uh, paper three economy economy and agriculture section also so that would be one another overlapping portion right so then <coughs> globalization this topic is popular in economy as well as in society so that would also be covered here so likewise uh, the last section is internal security <coughs> in internal security also we have some things like uh, the issues related to regionalism and ethnic conflicts 
like one of the internal security challenges is clashes among the uh, uh, communities, communal clashes. So here we will have the concept of ethnicity where we will talk and discuss about the unrest among tribal communities. That means tribal conflicts or like ethnic conflicts and political developments. Ethnic conflicts means clashes between two communities like what's happening presently in Manipur, like issue in between Kukis and Maitis. So what are they? So such kind of things will be studied. So same things would be relevant from the internal security portion also, right? And likewise, if you cover the entire portion of anthropology as it is relevant to all the aspects of man, that man performs as a member of society and as uh, through his individual capacity, it is relevant to all the sections, even including ethics and essay paper also. So this is how, if you happen to read anthropology, it fetches you one extra advantage for GS also. You can perform better in essays and better in ethics and you can have uh, other portions also you can cover. And if you read those portions pro properly, you can perform very well uh, here also. So it is both a quid pro quo. Give me this, I'll give you that. Likewise, so that's how it would be advantageous from all the areas, right? So this is one of the um, best optional from that perspective also. And other subjects, if you see, like no subject will have such entire overlapping of all the portions. Like did any section missed here? No. <coughs> In the sense, like uh, roughly, there is at least some relevance of something because all these subjects, either it can be polity, it can be economy, it can be uh, geography, it can be history, it is all about humans. So as we are studying about humans, what not it costs. So anthropology is a perfect blend of all the disciplines. So it will have relevance of all the disciplines like political, political dimension would be there, social dimension would be there, economic dimension would be there, everything would be covered. So that would be the beauty of anthropology, okay? So from Monday onwards, like as this was a short introductory and orientation session, from Monday onwards, let's begin our first class and let's do, uh, let's, uh, do it in a systematic manner. And from Monday onwards, let's have a marvelous journey and uh, let's try to just cover entire things in a proper manner. Okay, in the class, how we are going to proceed means, <coughs> in the class, First of all, like wherever it is necessary, I will explain some portions and then I'll give you the notes. And apart from that, wherever it is required, I'll circulate you the uh, booklets. Booklets in the sense like uh, uh, daily handouts, I'll try to circulate, okay? So that like uh, everything cannot be, uh, cannot be written in the class itself. So you will get some extra information uh, through booklets likewise, through handouts point of view. So those handouts would be comprehensive in the sense I can confidently and I am saying uh, uh, exactly that, like you no need to refer any other, any other resource because that would be a very good compendium and very good compilation of all the best available resources, all the best available resources, okay, in the sense for any subject, we doesn't have an appropriate resource which will be exactly used for UPSC preparation. But here, like we are going to circulate such kind of handouts where you can just absolutely reap the fruits of that directly. In the sense, you no need to just do other or uh, give extra efforts. Simply, you have to just update the examples or case studies. That's it, okay, through current you have to just uh, incorporate some of the current developments and that would be enough. And even in the class also, we'll be dealing uh, the topic in a comprehensive manner. And a comprehensive manner in the sense, we are not going to just waste the time because time is very precious for you. And uh, uh, I'm not just pointing out any other faculty, but simply I'm saying that in our classes, we won't have any faltu ke baate nahi hote. Yes, simply we will focus only on the, uh, the uh, exam-oriented approach, okay? What is important for the exam, 
we will just proceed likewise and we will just do that thing and we will just complete the syllabus on time that would be our target okay so our approach would be exam oriented approach and our notes and everything would be in such a manner in the sense for every topic when we go for writing we need a short intro we have to write for a short introduction so for every topic let's try to have an introduction okay and that introduction you can use it without further research work or without further uh, waste of time you can use such introductions for your answers okay so for every topic we will have a sh we will write a short introduction and how we will write in the body portion of exam like in the similar manner we will write we will have our notes for other portion for example the main topic if we say like functions of marriage so we will go in an exam oriented approach how much is essential for the exam and what is required for the exam that one would be there in your notes right so even we will write also in the similar fashion like for example uh, like even if we simply talk that thing only like functions of marriage like we will have short subheadings like for example social functions or economic functions or like simply like functions we will list them and under that we will just have the important points likewise so this approach will help you to write better answers in the exam also okay so if you happen to follow your notes that would be sufficient to have better make better structure in your and uh, in your uh, main answer writing also okay that would be one thing so apart from this like for every topic as we will have we have these things like we will have a uh, concluding lines also that will that that thing also i'll be just dictating and uh, you will be having that also so by that introductions and conclusions would be done and body portions though i'll be just giving you the notes some things you have to add okay that value addition you have to do by yourselves like any have like i'll suggest what to do in the class by the end of the class so if you follow that then that would be done also okay that would be one thing so then uh, apart from this like uh, <clears throat> uh, this is how we will just deal in the class right so mostly and other advantage of anthropology optional would be that with reference to the questions we were talking about the questions so if you see paper 1 and paper 2 like did anyone had a view of previous year papers okay so generally we will have uh, 29 questions in anthropology with choice 29 questions would be there so out of the 29 questions you have to write 19 questions on total complete 19 questions you have to write so anthropology is one topic where okay let's wait <laughs> so it's one subject where we can have uh, direct questions direct questions in the sense like if you just try to okay let's wait uh, like if you happen to take your syllabus can you see class 2 syllabus nature of culture there can you see ethnocentrism versus cultural relativism topic questions would be as direct likewise so there would be some short answer questions where you will get the questions like for example 10 marker questions would be short questions simply question would be this write a short notes on write a short notes on so question one two three four five questions would be there it would be given and there things would be direct in the sense write a short notes on ethnocentrism or it it can be like cultural relativism such topics all the all of them for example social stratification next topic you can see in class three like a uh, social stratification write a short notes on social stratification that's how question would be our marriage then you can see uh, 
write a short notes on loss of marriage write a short notes on types of marriages <clears throat> that's how questions would be or in any topic as the things have been clearly defined you can expect such kind of direct questions such direct questions in each paper there would be 10 direct questions <coughs> 10 direct questions and simple questions that means <coughs> in every paper roughly 100 marks would be very simple very simple and you can just write them in a direct manner and rest uh, nine questions which would be the long questions like you will have to write uh, 20 marker questions and you will have to write 15 marker questions right so these questions also uh, they involve very slight application there won't be much application or much analytical knowledge is not required so questions would be direct and straightforward so that's how questions would be so okay So, questions would be direct in the sense Okay, it's getting struck. Okay, just otherwise like go through go through the questions once. So you will get an understanding. <coughs> See, look at this question which is available here. Chromosomal aberrations can play havoc with the human body and mind. Explain with suitable examples. So if you happen to look, uh, look at the class number uh, <coughs> class number thirty three and class number 32 33 and 32 the topic is related to chromosomes and chromosomal aberrations okay so the topic is simple the central theme was chromosomal aberrations okay it has gone <laughs> so it's playing with us <laughs> so the topic was chromosomes and chromosomal aberrations so same thing we have saw here also okay so that's how questions would be there won't be much technically difficult things simply like chromosomal aberrations they have given in a sentence word but the central theme is like question was on chromosomal aberrations likewise so uh, that's how questions will also be there so otherwise let's try to open other folder let's go for paper two otherwise let's see will it have open or not hmm. huh. see if you see in paper 2 questions might be like this simply there can be questions like purushartha and righteous living today this is one question here in paper 2 you can see the uh, thing like uh, look at class 69 class 69 where you have structure and nature of traditional indian uh, indian traditional system there you have a topic called varnashram purushartha so the topic is direct simply purushartha so purushartha and connectivity to righteous living today likewise the questions would be direct in the sense like you can take for example harappan sales you will be studying that in history also and here also you have like harappan culture so harappan seals that would be simple thing like uh, we can deal it and uh, other things would be like this relevance of tribe caste continuum relevance of tribe caste continuum so simply if you see uh, this topic is also directly it would be there look at class number 70 class number 70 and in that look at the end point of class number 70 tribe caste 
continuum. Can you see? So, question is this thing only like relevance of tribe caste continuum. Simply, they have added one word, that's it. That's all. Okay. So, all others also, if you look, they would be like that only. So, look at this question. Critically discuss the origin of Indus Valley civilization. Agar aap log anthropology may be nahi pad rahe ho, to bhi ho jayega. Jaysay history may cover ho jayega vaysay Indus Valley civilization. To same thing would be covered here. To likewise, there would be uh, inherent advantages. Look at this question. Give the distribution and characteristic features of upper paleolithic culture. Anyhow, here it would be little technical, but still upper paleolithic age. So, that would be covered in history also. So, <clears throat> likewise, then if you happen to see the question here, like explain the impact of concept of nature man spirit complex on uh, sustainable use of natural resources with suitable examples. So, the chief concept or central theme is nature man spirit complex. Okay. So, just look at class number 71. Class number 71. What is the topic there? Sacred complex and nature man spirit complex. That means themes would be direct, slight application without like they have to made it into a sentence format. So, they have made it. That is it. So, there will not be much technical issues, but other subjects they will make uh, we need to have more analytical knowledge to decode the question itself. You might be just watching it in GS sections like where we have to just decode the question what they are asking. But here we have that ease in anthropology. Likewise, you can take anything like here. Uh, the next topic is examine the contributions of S.C. Roy in highlighting the role of customary class in tribal life. So, look at the 73, 73 to 75 topic where we have contributions of Indian anthropologists contributions of Indian anthropologists. So, one among the important person was S.C. Roy, Sharachandra Rai. So, we will study about each one. So, like wait, every year they will pick one scholar. Every year they will pick one scholar. So, if you read, like there would be hardly 5 to 10 scholars, important scholars. If you read them, sure shot question, no doubt in that, likewise. So, that is also one predicted area. Then, look at this question critically assess the impact of Christianity on tribal culture and identity. Okay? Impact of Christianity. Now, you look in, uh, look at the concept class 72, class 72, where impact of Buddhism, Jainism, Islam on Indian society, that is one section. And the same thing, you just look at the class number 87, class number 87 impact of Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam and other religions and tribal societies. Can you see that section? So, there they have picked impact of Christianity. The topic is this thing, critically assess the impact of Christianity on tribal communities. Is there any subjectivity in this? Like every year they will pick one impact. One year they will talk about impact of Christianity, one year impact of Buddhism, one year impact of Islam, one year impact of other religion likewise, Jainism, that is it. So, one year they have picked. So, next year we can expect other religious impact. So, that is very well predicted and uh, if we have proper notes for all the topics, then we can nail anthropology optional properly. Okay? So, are you getting like what I am trying to say? So, that is how it would be the best optional because if you look at other subjects, same, like same things would be relevant in sociology also, but problem with sociology would be that like it needs more of analytical knowledge. There won't be something directly like this. They will ask in depth, they will go to the various aspects. For example, social stratification. If we have social stratification, question here would be direct. Write a short notes on social stratification. That would be the question. But in sociology, they will ask the questions like, critically analyze the social stratification, Max Weber's theory of social stratification. But here we no need to read and we no need to go in depth because scope of anthropology is very broad. We have to cover sociological aspects, physical aspects, biological aspects and uh, tribals, Indian anthropology, all these things. So, they cannot go in depth. But in sociology, they will pick only one theme that is socio-cultural portion of anthropology, where 
this syllabus would be constrained, so they have to go in depth. So when they go in depth, obviously questions would be more analytical and questions would be more in depth, likewise. Okay, but in anthropology, that's not the case. Whatever is mentioned in the syllabus, you can just expect in the paper. That's it. Okay, for that point of view, like if we have, like see here, discuss the contributions of NK Bose. There we have choice of questions. So in this, you have to pick at least two, two questions you have to write. That means question number three or question number four. In one, he is asking about SE right. In other question, he is asking about NK Bose. Here also there is an extra advantage. If you happen to miss, a, miss to read about SE right, at least you might be reading about NK Bose, Nirmal Kumar Bose. So that's how also it would be advantageous likewise. So I wanted to show this because it will, uh, it will highlight the importance in the sense like how it would be useful for your uh, exam likewise. So likewise, so this is how the questions would be and uh, there won't be much issues. See, questions would be straightforward, urbanization and tribal institutions. Same topics would be here in the syllabus likewise. So that's how you will get the questions and uh, you can look any other questions. All of them would be in such a fashion only, okay? So discuss the impact of Forest Rights Act on the livelihood and culture of tribal peoples. So you will have a question on, you will have a concept, look at uh, the topic, um, look at class 85 likewise, 85, 82, class number 82. In class number 82, can you see developmental projects, their impacts on tribes, problems of rehabilitation and development of forest policy and tribals. Development of forest policy. So like one of the important forest act and forest policies, Forest Rights Act 2016. Okay, so that is the question. So such in such a way questions would be like that. So this is one inherent advant advantage of anthropology optional, okay? In any other optional, you won't get such an advantage. So look at this question, delineate the constitutional safeguards of religious minorities in India. Constitutional safeguards, simply questions would be same. So you can see, like as I was saying, like uh, uh, look at class 84, class 84, the last line of class 84, la, la, there you can see constitutional safeguards of scheduled tribes and scheduled castes. That is one way and look at class 77, class 77, there you have linguistic religious minorities. So here they are asking about the religious minorities. So we will study about those constitutional safeguards for this religious minorities. Same thing you will be studying in polity also, likewise. So now tell me, is that familiar, is it familiar or uh, is it tough? Uh, things are there in anthropology. Things are familiar only, provided if you just focus there, it would be advantageous here, likewise. So portion is very much uh, overlapping and the questions would be very much direct. But I am not saying that they would be absolutely easy. But thing is that like in every optional, there would be some hardships. Hardships also would be there. So if you see what kind of hardships means, roughly 29 questions would be there in entire paper. Out of that, you have to write 19 questions, okay, 10, 10 markers and rest three questions you have to write, which is of 50. So 10, 10 markers means 100 marks. So that would be one thing. And three questions each of 50 marks. That would be, that, that makes 250 marks. In this three questions, you will have 120 marker question, 115 marker and another 15 marker. Likewise, question would be there, right? So here, if you look likewise, we have to write a total of 
10 plus 9, 19 questions, right. So, if we look the beauty of anthropology out of these 29 questions, roughly 20 to 22 questions would be straight forwarded, would be straight forwarded. That means out of these 20, 10 questions would be direct, one line, a simple one word question. It is not a question, it is a word direct, like as you saw, examples likewise. So, that is one thing. So, rest questions, rest 10 to 12 questions would be one liner, slight application, that is it, okay. If you happen to read the syllabus properly, if you happen to prepare notes for each topic properly, then obviously it is done, right. And hardly roughly 7 to 8 questions would be in detail. So, you have to read in detail in the sense like we have saw the Forest Rights Act that has been mentioned under the development of forest policies and acts likewise. So, likewise though, though that would be covered in classes likewise. So, that is how questions would be asked. So, these 6 to or 7 to 8 questions would be different. So, we have to just focus on such questions. Okay. So, we will see and we will focus how such kind of things would be asked and implicit areas also we will be focusing in depth in the class likewise. So, that is how, uh, uh, that's how it would be advantageous, right. So, is that clear? So, that is with respect to uh, things like various aspects like an about anthropology. Why is it, why is it the best optional? and answer to that questions were like we had those points. So, now next thing would be that how we have to proceed with this. Okay, so we just had a view why anthropology is the best optional and we had everything, we had just covered everything, okay. Now, how to just approach, how to just approach? So, what you have to do is that in order to just get proper orientation, first thing is that you have to just go for uh, regular classes, that is first because mostly people will think like they may cover through self-study likewise, but problem is that you have to know what to read, where to read, how to read and how much to read. If you sit and read continuously, you will go on reading. There are so many books available and you do not know how much to read. So, in classes we will be focusing on all these things, what to read. We have to go through syllabus and where to read. In class we will be providing the class notes which would be the best one like where the best compilation which has been done from all the uh, all the references, like if you look at the beauty of our constitution, Ambedkar has said that, like constitution of India has been, uh, it is a beautiful uh, thing like which has been ransacked by all the constitutions. So, in the similar fashion, like our notes would be that one, like it eases your uh, preparation likewise. So, that would be one thing and uh, we will tell about like where, where to read, wherever references are needed, I will be explaining to read which book likewise for further reference, then how to read. How to read means like we have a sequence. So, we will go through the sequence and uh, after the class you will be getting that orientation. Then how much to read? Generally, this is very, very important with reference to optional. Usually, students will feel like optional means we have to have a PhD kind of knowledge. No, it is a myth. Optional is also another paper in UPSC, right. So, you no need to just become a master in the subject. Simply, if you have the fair knowledge of the subjects, that is enough. So, how much to read or how much to refer, that we will be telling and that orientation you will be getting. For that, regular classes is required. So, that is one thing. 
so then once you just do the classes by that time like you will get the complete knowledge about the syllabus then what you have to do like after completion of the topic you have to just go for basic research and development in the sense basic research like how previous year questions have been asked from this topic you have to have a look so when you look that obviously you will get some uh, idea how the questions can be asked from this topic so when you get this particular thing obviously you can just prepare some uh, or you can practice those questions okay likewise so that thing you have to do then once you just complete the classes and once you become the uh, once you master the syllabus of anthropology then you can start making a concised crisp notes okay anyhow you will get things in class and uh, things would be done so after the completion of class you will get the knowledge about previous year questions also based on this knowledge after the completion of the classes you have to just make a crisp notes which you can use it before the exam so things should be done simultaneously these three things should be done simultaneously while classes are running okay so then after preparing your notes like after completion of your entire classes and the after completion of your entire notes you have to work on the skill enhancement or you have to work on value addition things like preparing uh, diagrams preparing flow charts preparing tables or preparing such kind of practicing for such kind of diagrams likewise so when you do that you will be well acquainted with all your weapons for writing practice so that's the time that's the right time where you can just start your practice of one's writing are you getting that so for that that means before you go for answer writing you have to have all these resources you have to co cover the classes you have to gain the knowledge and you have to master the syllabus and then you have to be ready with your notes and you have to prepare your value addition material and then if you go for answer writing practice there you can just improve the skills of answer writing right so that would be the next step and after writing this you can just test your manage your management of skills like how could you be able to write uh, or manage the time in the exam how to manage uh, like uh, whether time is sufficient or like space is sufficient likewise you can just you can just check about such kind of things and you can do that with the help of a test series if you want that would be the final step so finally like do not retain the knowledge with you only if you retain the knowledge you won't get anything so what you have to do is that you have to discuss and you have to debate these concepts with your friends so usually it is believed that most of the upsc aspirants will keep their knowledge with them thinking that if they share the knowledge then it may be advantageous for others don't think likewise if you are sharing the knowledge and if you are caring for others it yields you also in the sense like education like sharing uh, the educational knowledge if you share that your knowledge also grows so keep that thing in mind so that would be one thing which you have to do at the end you have to discuss debate all other concepts likewise so this would be the right strategy and right approach okay so at the beginning class we were talking about right optional so we have said all the things like how anthropology is the right optional right right time right time for doing that would be this period that means roughly before december if you complete the optional like uh, that would be the best period so that you will get an extra time for revision and and uh, you can uh, finish this well before the prelims so that would be one thing and wherever for example if you have slight lags you can finish things through writing also you can spend by the time november if you're completing if you complete it by november by november if you are completing everything including classes including notes including uh, that research and uh, all other works then from december to feb in this three months you can go for answer writing practice you can write and you can test your skills and you can improvise yourselves so by february you can finish this practice also 
and then like you can focus in March to May, you can focus for pre. So then from June to September, you can focus again on the test theories and for the revision. So that's how you can just give your best in uh, best for mains also. So right time for completion of optional would be this period that is hardly from August to November. So that's why we are beginning our batch also in this time. So that you will get a fair time for reading, revision and all for all other things. So this is the right time and right strategy would be like what we have discussed. And what's the right time means like we are saying like in our organization like we will be going to do whatever things we are doing we have already said why you should pick Eden IAS in the sense like we are just going to do things in a systematic manner. Our notes would be the best notes and apart from this I have missed to say you one thing that after completion of each module, each module means like first module would be of sociocultural anthropology, 15 classes. After completion of that, let's have a short and a crisp uh, rapid revision classes for two days where let us try to cover and let us try to revise the portions or revise the things in a crisp manner, whatever we have read. Okay, uh, two to three, in two to three classes, let's try to do that. So if you do that, you will get one uh, rapid revision, rapid revision and uh, it helps you to recollect the things. Okay, so time and again we'll be revising that. Okay, after completion of every module, like for example, second module will be theories and thoughts, theories and thoughts. After completion of that, let's go for a quick revision. That means roughly for every 15 days, for every 15 days, we will have uh, two to three revision classes. In regular classes, I'll be speaking more. Though the classes would be interactive, it won't be like today's class, like where I am speaking, speaking much. Classes would be interactive, where you will be speaking and I'll be speaking, okay? But in revision classes, it would be that like you have to speak more and I'll be listening you, right? So likewise, so we will have that revision classes. After completion of each module, we will go for that. And after completion of each module, you will also have a sectional test. So that you can just go through, you can just go through uh, your, you can test yourself and you can evaluate yourself to how far you are acquainted with the topics. Likewise, that would be one thing. And apart from that, like daily, daily, I'll, I'll just dictate one question or two questions related to the topic which we are covering. And uh, you can write answers for those questions also so that daily improvements can also be possible. Okay, that is one thing. And with this, after completion of a week, let's try to analyze uh, on weekly basis, on weekly basis, we'll be analyzing how you are progress with reference to your answer writing. That means by the end of the week, or we have to just evaluate ourselves. We have to uh, reanalyze ourselves. Like for the first day of your answer writing and the fifth day of your answer writing, what improvements you had? We will try to analyze that, and we will just check that one also. So by this way. Daily we will cover classes, daily we can just focus on writing, daily we can, we can just, weekly we can have analysis of uh, your writing improvements of you and then uh, for fortnightly, that means for 15 days once, we can just have the evaluation through sectional tests and for uh, after completion of each module, you can have your revision also be done. So in all manners, we, we would be doing that. Okay, so that's how we will be proceeding. So uh, as, uh, and apart from that, we'll be providing you some, uh, you will be getting some booklets also, which will help you for further understanding of the concepts. Whatever we are giving in the classes, that would be a good thing. Apart from that, for further references, like uh, you will get some booklets also, so where you can have uh, the information in a printed form. So that, will also be there. 
so that is one thing so you will get all these things so that the, from that point of view we can say that here we can cover it in a systematic manner in an exam oriented approach keep this thing in mind like we will completely focus on exam oriented approach and we won't have any other kind of discussions or like uh, time waste procedures will not be there so that is one thing so so right optional right time right strategy right place is done and right mentor anyhow <laughs> i should not talk about myself but anyhow you will get to know like why okay so you will understand slowly like like uh, how i'll be supporting in the sense like till completion of the uh, till completion of your uh, course we'll be just in touch and you can approach me at any time with a proper uh, procedure protocol you can take up a simple uh, appointment or like doubt, doubt session counter or like immediately after the class also you can approach me with any of your doubts i'll be ready to clarify those right so likewise we'll be proceeding so that's half and uh, Mm, that's about our things related to our course things related to our course so this is about how to approach we have done how to approach so that's one thing so that's all from my side okay so is there any doubts from your side any doubts from your side side or any further things which you have which you are expecting to know online students <coughs> do you have any doubts any doubts from online students right so other thing which we have missed is with reference to books and resources like uh, are you aware like what books to proceed with so simply like one best thing would be one best thing would be the class notes very important resource would be the class notes and this would be a best compilation as i have said you best compilation and then like next thing would be the printed material which would be circulated to you because this would also be a good compilation from various resources okay so that would be your next thing so yeah. then for each module for each module you will have uh, resources in the sense for let us say first to say for socio cultural part for socio cultural anthropology for socio cultural anthropology you have some books like one would be written by madan and majumdar madan and majumdar introduction to socio cultural anthropology by madan and majumdar this would be one source and apart from this like uh, an outline of socio cultural anthropology that has been written by naresh kumar vaid naresh kumar vaid so this would be another important resource you can pick any one and one of the best source apart from our class notes would be like you can pick nk vaid socio cultural anthropology okay that gives you a right approach okay so one thing is enough and remember too many sources will make you you make your preparation clumsy don't make too many resources be clear with your number of resources simply to say like there is there is a famous uh, uh, famous saying also like too many cooks will will spoil the broth in the sense if if you are just adding ev everything to uh, the food obviously it will become a kichdi like simply we will add everything and that becomes a kitchen and we won't get a fair thing likewise so don't have multiple resources restrain and restrict your resources so that your preparation will be in a better channelized manner likewise so this would be one best reference for socio cultural anthropology 
and next for physical anthropology or biological anthropology for this portion you have one important book it's like it has been written by a scholar called p north this would be one reference for physical anthropology p north or b m das p north or b m das any one you can pick and amongst that p north would be the best one okay so you just refer so that the uh, try to just have a uh, look at the uh, language of the books likewise whichever it's comfortable for you you can just proceed both of them are would be good so that is one thing so then we have the next uh, area like the archaeological anthropology this would be another section where we will study about prehistoric cultures likewise archaeological anthropology for this you will have a book called an outline of prehistoric archaeology by dk bhattacharya dk bhattacharya this would be one book for prehistoric uh, for anthropological archaeology that is anthropolic uh, anthropological anthropology archaeological anthropology outline of prehistoric archaeology by dk bhattacharya that would be one thing so in paper 1 itself we will have other topic called applica applied anthropology applications of anthropology for that the book would be one book would be for applied anthropology applied anthropology by lp vidyarthi lp vidyarthi so this would be one best book okay applied anthropology by lk vidyarthi so these are uh, very important sources for your paper 1 okay so these resources would be sufficient from paper 1 point of view okay and then there are in paper 2 we have other sections like indian anthropology for indian anthropology you can just have one source that is indian anthropology by nadim hasnain by nadim hasnain so this would be one best reference for the first part of paper 2 okay then last section would be the tribal anthropology for tribal anthropology you have you will have lp vidyarthi's book lp vidyarthi tribal anthropology by lp vidyarthi okay these would be the best resources so like a slightly slowly you will be getting uh, the approach paper also like uh, you will get the approach paper also in this also like i have mentioned other references but amongst those references this would be the best and finalized references which you can follow and apart from this if you want to have general orientation of anthropology what is anthropology or overview just to have a overview of anthropology you can have some things okay but these are must references uh, which you can refer for further enhancement after the classes okay and if you have if you want to just have basic understanding of anthropology then you can just proceed with one books uh, like some books like kerala board scert textbooks will be there class 11th and class 12th this would be uh, these books will give you basic insights or basic understanding of what is anthropology or very basics like NC artists you will read for GS in the similar fashion you can keep them uh, keep these books for likewise for basic understanding and in an advanced standard reference if you want to have uh, an overview of anthropology you can refer uh, anthropology by ember and ember anthropology by ember and ember okay 
but even without reading the anthropology by ember 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 and ember also you can proceed no problem okay but if you are intended and if you want to just go through in depth then you can just proceed with these references okay so these would be the best references and along with this you will have to continuously refer some of the uh, websites also websites also so one website would be like as there is a continuous uh, as uh, half of the portion in paper 2 is related to tribals so you have to regularly visit the ministry of tribal affairs ministry of tribal affairs so this is must ministry of tribal affairs and amongst this there would be various schemes there would be various programs there would be various initiatives like all such things you have to or developmental projects everything would be just mentioned in the under that okay so ministry of tribal affairs would be one thing which gives you that orientation apart from this ministry of tribal affairs for having knowledge about the schemes programs you can also refer the vikaspedia.com vikaspedia.com this would be another source where you can find the information about the schemes initiatives all these things and vikaspedia go to the tribe it is also government site so we have to go for authenticated and uh, likewise okay that is one thing so this would be one thing so then like uh, then regularly try to just go through some of uh, uh, some of the regular things like you can just go through newspapers so in newspapers you will get some articles wherever it is relevant for our portions you have to just cover that one and then you can just cover epw economic and uh, political weekly epw where you will get some more information about some developmental projects are like social political economic issues so epw you have to just cover and then you have to just go through uh, there would be one report called zaza virginius zaza zaza committee report so you will also have to read about this zaza committee report like if you talk about the garnan section you will have to read the second arc report for writing better answers and for enhancing your concepts second arc report in the similar fashion for doing better things with reference to tribal part you have to refer this zaza report so that is varzdiniya zaza we will have that one varzinius varzinius zaza so this would be one committee which you have to refer and from these sources you can pick the important examples and you can pick the important case studies required for our syllabus you can pick the case studies and you can pick the examples from these sources okay so that would be some resources which you have to refer from outside the classes and apart from this we have uh, one one thing called like university of alabama university of alabama so you have to refer this site university of alabama site in order to just read about read more about the anthropological theories and thoughts anthropological theories and thoughts that means to read about more about these scholars university of alabama the official site of university of alabama like where you will be getting uh, uh, further information about the theories and thoughts likewise so that would be uh, some of the one of the list of uh, resources which you can have right so
and uh, apart from this which online sites which you have to refer means we have uh, an organization called anthropological survey of india okay like archaeological survey of india we have anthropological survey of india so you have to refer this anthropological survey of india also on a regular basis for further developments with reference to anthropology okay this would be one thing so you will have like a, you can search like anthropological survey of india you will get that one so that would be one thing so then finally like a last thing which you can further collect is that there is a 2014 edition of yojana 2014 january edition of yojana yojana magazine so this 2014 uh, january edition of mag uh, yojana it is entirely related to tribal and marginalized communities okay so it is related to tribal plus marginalized communities so this this thing will also comes in handy for your further enhancement of concepts okay so this sums up all the references and books also okay likewise so that's with respect to books and references okay further do you have any further doubts like myths epw uh, economic political weekly economic and political weekly it's a magazine like yoshna kurukshetra epw also one a weekly magazine likewise okay so is there anyone has issues with the like something like i don't have science background and how can i just proceed with that such kind of doubts is there anyone don't worry no need to just uh, think likewise we saw syllabus we have said like social part social cultural part is there physical that means biological part is there then other portions are also there so it would be social uh, science portion would be roughly 20% of entire syllabus so don't worry about one section and uh, if you are not acquainted with drawing a good diagrams don't worry any half we will try to just uh, we can just learn that also as we have already said impossible itself says i am possible so it is very much possible on practice so don't worry with that and uh, with reference to examples and case studies we will be having the best case studies and best examples and uh, trust me it makes you it makes even your life interesting if you learn anthropology and it makes you a holistic human being in the sense what things you don't know about humans also you'll be learning like uh, there would be weird customs there would be weird customs there would be weird practices there would be weird cultural traditions there would be uh, astonishing fact, uh, facts from physical anthropology and there would be like uh, you will learn about tribals and uh, tribal uh, activities they will bring you like uh, they'll bring humor also to your life so all those things would be uh, they will just mesmerize uh, even in your day to day life also okay we will try to learn and we will try to just cover all of them all of them in a systematic manner okay so on this note like any doubts finally hmm. no it's already published hmm. any have from internet sources you will get otherwise like i will also circulate when we go to that particular thing any have one group will be made for you so you will get that uh, uh, zaza committee re report uh, report recommendations and i will i will also provide from my side okay so you you yourself also can search and any have when things comes i will also circulate the necessary resources likewise okay so don't worry about that so anything so on this note let's conclude our class and let's try to begin our first class from monday onwards and uh, like trust me like this journey would be again i am saying this journey would be a marvelous journey and you can just enjoy this journey not just for the examination purpose but 
to just enrich, to enlight uh, yourself also as a human being. Being a human being, we have to know about human beings, isn't it? See, as we are human beings, agar hum apne ke bare mein nahi jante, to kiske bare mein jante? So we have to know and we have to know about ourselves. In search of ourselves, we'll be just going in the classes. We will just explore everything about ourselves as a human being and uh, in the society as well as as an individual, right? So that's all for today from my side. So let's meet on Monday and just go through and have these basic things and try to just go through some of the previous year questions likewise for further knowledge. So we'll meet and we'll begin our first class from Monday, right? So that's all from my side. So good luck. Wish you all good luck and thank you all.